My name is Jimmy Johnston, and I will be delivering an excerpt from the inspiration of the Declaration of Independence. Judges are ready. We meet today to celebrate the birthday of America. The coming of new life always excites our interest. Although we know, in the case of the individual, that it has been an infinite repetition, reaching back beyond our vision, it only makes it the more wonderful. But how our interest and wonder increase when we behold the miracle of birth of a new nation. It is to pay our tribute of reverence and respect to those who participated in such a mighty event that we annually celebrate the fourth day of July. It is not so much then for the purpose of undertaking to proclaim new theories and principles that this annual celebration is maintained, but rather to reaffirm and reestablish those old theories and principles which time and the unerring logic of events have demonstrated to be sound. Amid all the clash of conflicting interests, amid all the welter of partisan politics, every American can turn for solace and consolation to the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States with the assurance and confidence that those two great charters of freedom and justice remain firm and unshaken. Whatever perils appear, whatever dangers threaten, the nation remains secure in the knowledge that the ultimate application of the law of our land will provide an adequate defense and protection. Governments do not make ideas, but ideals make governments. This is both historically and logically true. Of course, the government can help to sustain ideas and can create institutions through which they can be better observed, but their source, by their very nature, is in the people. The people have to bear their own responsibilities. There is no method by which that burden can be shifted to the government. It is not the enactment, but the observance of laws that creates the character of a nation. About the Declaration, there is a finality that is exceedingly restful. It is often asserted that the world has made a great deal of progress since 1776. That we have had new thoughts and new experiences which give us a great advantage over the people of that day. And that we may therefore very well discard their conclusions for something more modern. That reasoning cannot be applied to this great charter. If all men are created equal, that is final. If they are endowed with inalienable rights, that is final. If governments derive their just powers from the consent of the government, that is final. No advance, no progress can be made beyond these propositions. If anyone wishes to deny their truth or soundness, the only direction in which he can proceed historically is not forward, but backward, from the time when there is no equality, no right to the individual, no rule the people. Those who wish to proceed in that direction cannot and will not lay claim to progress. They are reactionary. Their ideas are not more modern, but more ancient than those of the revolutionary fathers. The rights of the individual are held safe and protected by constitutional guarantees which even the government is bound not to violate. There is one thing among us that is established beyond question, it is self-government, the right of the people to rule. We live in an age of science, an abounding accumulation of material things. These things do not create our declaration. Our declaration created them. The things of the spirit come first, unless we cling to that. All our material prosperity, overwhelming though it may appear, will turn to a barren scepter in our grasp. If we are able to maintain that great heritage which has been bequeathed to us, we must be as like-minded as the fathers who created it. Thank you.